Hello everybody, I'm going to talk about mail. Uh, sometimes this is called chain mail for people who don't know it is actually called mail, uh, just mail. So I want to talk a little bit about mail and how I used it in my artwork, how I've kind of done a little bit of research into it and where I get my research from. So let's go into it. Uh, the folder of mail, right. So there are different kinds of mail. Uh, I'm going to talk mostly about the Western uh, European, uh, mostly European styled kind of mail. There are other depictions of mail, uh, such as uh, kind of Mughal Empire, Persian, and uh, it's it's a particular armor type that's been spread out throughout the world. So um, it's been interpreted in different ways and created in different ways historically. So. The one we uh, want to avoid looking at mostly is butted mail. Now butted mail is um, the ring is literally sat uh, on each other. Um, if I zoom in I can explain a little better. You can see the ends of the ring are kind of touching each other. They're uh, probably set in a V groove um, something similar to that. Let's get uh, a little my red brush out so I can show you properly. Um, okay, so it it will. Oh, that's blue. I don't want blue. So it is probably joined together in a V formation, <clears throat> like that. Uh, it's kind of strong, um, but and it's actually quite cheap to purchase um, a shirt of butted males. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, this is wire ring riveted mail with dome rivets. Now you can see here that the, the wire uh, it, it's more of a, a round section so uh, the mail itself is um, quite it's 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 like basically a solid tube in a ring, and then uh, flanned out at the end, and then a rivet goes through it, and it's pinned together. So it's quite solid, uh, and there's a lot of uh, historical examples of this kind of style with the ring um, being quite round, the, the wire being quite round and then rivet it together obviously. This creates a really strong structure. Um, and then you've got a uh, flat ring which I think is, I might be wrong but I think this is really more of a modern take on uh, riveted chain mail, uh, chain mail, uh, mail. So uh, the actual cross section of the The ring is, if you cut it down the centre, it would be more of a flap, um, or it might even look like this. Um, so yeah, that's a, a different take on the mail. And then you've got like an in-between version here. That's, I'd say, a little bit more historical. It's more of a kind of ovalish shape. Maybe flattens a little bit towards the centre, and then obviously riveted and pinned together um, so it's nice and solid and it's not going to separate. That's the disadvantage of butted mail, it can easily be separated. The links can uh, kind of break uh, with uh, any kind of uh, impact so uh, the rivets really keep that structure strong. Right, that's me waffling a more about mail, let's get into how I research it. Uh, I look at effigies. Effigies are a really good example of how mail was tailored towards the body. In this case I've looked at the foot and you can see how the, the structure of the foot has been uh, you, you can see it coming out because the uh, quality of the mail is, is really quite high um, and it's been tailored really well towards the body. A lot of uh, bad reproductions don't have that and it's, it's quite, gets quite saggy on the body and you don't want to carry that kind of weight. 
Uh, another example is looking at manuscripts, and this is a good interpretation. Uh, it's a good way of looking at how historically it was interpreted then in that time period or around a similar time period. Uh, so you get a bit of a more uh, of a take on how the uh, historical people, well, people historically saw it. Uh, however, you know, the quality of the art differs throughout uh, the years. This is in the 14th century, uh, is it 14? No, 13th century. Um, so uh, the quality of the art differs and when you get into more of a uh, probably about 15th and 16th century it changes a little bit um, the quality of artwork and art depictions changes so let's move on um, another good way of researching mail is actually looking at it up front uh, you can either purchase it for yourself um, or you can look online so or you can go to some events this is a 13th century men at arms or a knight it'd probably be a knight and you can see how and using photos as reference is, is key as well you can see how the armor is built on the body and how it reflects light um, so it's, it's quite nice to see uh, an interpretation up front and seeing it first hand so when you do your artwork you have a better understanding of how the rings work on the body um, how the mail is tailored towards the body and how it how it reacts to light and certain light sources. Um, another take is uh, yeah going to museums. So here, this is in the Royal Armouries in Leeds. This is of what I should imagine. Oh, there's a little tab here. Oh, it just says cavalryman. I'm going to have a massive guess and say that he's from the Mughal period, if not he's definitely Eastern from India or you know Persia, Pakistan, Afghanistan era areas um, and it's, it's, it's a good idea to see how it's looked at throughout the world um, but um, again I'm looking at more Western style mail but again you can uh, branch out a little bit and see how it was done in different ways you know how it was built, how it was tailored towards the body in different ways you know going around the, uh, the the face there and you know how it was fixed to the arms you know different things like that it's quite interesting to see other takes um, from different cultures and then you got the famous bassinet from the Wallace collection and they've got uh, an avon tail here that's made of mail and it's quite nice to see how that was built how, how it's weaved, how what the size of the rings are and how they are put together, how they're constructed um, so you get a good context of the, the period uh, so this bassinet here would have been late 14th century um, or mid, uh, kind of mid late 14th century very early 15th century right. okay so the next bit is 16th century paintings like I mentioned earlier now towards um, this kind of period artwork tends to become a little more realistic and they um, the artists have a, a better understanding of how light works how, how to um, portray it visually and so you can see here um, I think this is a depiction of St George um, but he is in uh, He's got a male shirt on. Um, I'm not sure whether these would be voiders. Um, I think he might actually have a full male shirt on and then a, a, an extra skirt underneath. Um, but it's nice to see how it was done historically in the 15th century. Um, 15th, 16th century, I think. This is either, I might be wrong, this is, might be late 15th century. Um, and then maybe 16th century anyway it's, it's good to get a good understanding of how it was done during this period where artwork tends to become a little more realistic um, and how they saw it um, how they gathered reference for it um, they may have actually had someone sit there in the mail shirt and um, paint it uh, and how it 
you know, reflects light and certain light sources. Okay, moving on. Do, 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 and today, so if I zoom out, two of my favourite historical artists, um, one of them, uh, one of the you know great historical artists, these guys, uh, Graham Turner and Angus McBride. Now Graham Turner, um, he has really good examples of uh, English knights from. 13th century all the way up until uh, the 15th and 16th century. So uh, he has obviously gathered uh, plenty of reference. You can really tell that he's gone into a great deal of research. How it looked in the day as well as depicting it visually and I can you can kind of tell here in this image that he has depicted each weave with a different tone value uh, or a different hue. So there'll be one um, lot that will be in a kind of greenish, brownish tone, and then the other um, weave of male will be in a kind of blue tone to reflect the sky, which is quite interesting. You can tell uh, this. It brings a, a more realistic take on the uh, environment that that night is in and you can see here different areas where it, it, it folds and flaps down um, here and how it goes around the wrist and how it goes around the uh, the chin you know different little, little different things like that he's obviously gathered reference and it's nice to look at this kind of stuff as a, a take on how I should be looking at uh, mail and how, how should I interpret it in my artwork. Um, also Angus McBride, rest in peace. Um, actually I'll get my red pen again. You know he's in, in both cases with Graham Turner and Angus McBride they have gone into quite a lot of detail and done every single ring however there are certain areas of shade you know, here, whether he's gathered a reference or not, I'm not sure, but you can tell that he knows how it is constructed, how the weaves are, are constructed, how it reflects in the light, and certain parts here, you know, with, with certain parts of shade and certain parts of light, is nice to see here, and yeah. It's, it's, it's cool to see how it is um, done by other professionals. And, okay, so I'm gonna move on to my stuff. So I have two different methods. Uh, the first one is painting it, literally going down on the knit, knit grit and painting every single ring. Um, so the one on the left here is actually a study from Game of Thrones. Uh, and I've taken a screenshot and decided to study the actual Aventail on his uh, what looks like a Burgonet kind of styled, looks very Eastern styled um, armor. Um, but I've you know there's areas of shade where the light source is coming through the mail, and then areas here, and how the links are woven in certain different cases, um, especially in this area here. Uh, where it's actually quite confusing to see what's going on, you know. Uh, there's certain weave patterns here that are foreshortened and some that are not, which are around here, which you can see the rings a little bit more, a little bit more defined. And then I've got my version here, which is a study. Um, it's more of a I would say it's more of a self-portrait because that's actually me under there. I took a photo of myself and then I painted it. And then I've gone and decided to paint every single ring, which took absolutely forever to do. All those rings hand done. Um, and I've used my photo reference to see how the, the weaves foreshorten, how they are folded um, and go around the body like so 
um, and how it's foreshortened here. And then here, because it's quite flat, uh, slightly curved around my face, the rings are more uh, visible, so you can see some whole rings here compared to here where it's literally C shapes. Right. So that's one method of how I go about it. Um, the next method is quite cheaty. I use photography. I have literally gone out, gone into the back garden, take a photo of myself in my mail shirt and then put it in my artwork. This is a very quick trick, um, especially if you're doing concept art or if you're doing artwork that needs to be put out very quickly or quite rapidly and you need it out there so it's quite easy just it's actually quicker to put a mail shirt on set up your camera go outside take the photo of yourself in the pose that you need it bring it into Photoshop plonk it in and edit it from there uh, instead of going in and painting every single ring and then trying to look for reference um, elsewhere so it can look it can seem like I'm cheating a lot but this is my own photography and it's paint, uh, put into my own artwork so it's my own creation as it were so that's how I kind of justify it <laughs> anyway so that's how I get about mail um, and mail as an armor and that's my kind of little understanding on it so far um, I've got loads more to learn uh, I've only been doing this for a few years so yeah I hope you enjoyed that and uh, hope to see you on the next video that I do that I haven't planned yet. Bye!